Hello and welcome to the first part of our Space Invader style game. In this part we're going to start with the basic processing program that has the ellipse that follows your mouse around and work towards turning it into a game shell. In the game shell that means that we're going to be displaying what the actual map or world would look like. We'll be able to see basic geometric shapes like rectangles that represent the characters, but we're just setting up our principal variables, colors, etc. So we're going to start from just some housekeeping items with the default code. I always like to comment on our close brackets, so close setup. Uh, and I like to comment on draw, so close draw. And let's just give ourselves a little bit of space at the top. This section up top again is called global, which is where we put all of our variables. Uh, a couple more things. I like to make our functions just a little bit bigger. We don't need this ellipse command, so let's ditch that. We actually want to move background from setup to draw because background is going to be a looping function. And again, draw loops, setup does not. Let's actually set the background to be black, which the color code for that would be zero. I like to put a little comment next to that. And let's go ahead and set our window size. And this could vary. I'm going to make my window size a smaller rectangular shape to kind of appear like what an arcade screen would be. So I'm going to set my canvas to be 600 by 500. The next thing let's do in our draw function here, I mean, let's actually just click play real quick to see where we're at. We have a black screen, excellent. Let's actually hit save as well. You can call this whatever you'd like. I'm gonna call this invaders part one. Hit submit. In our draw function, we're gonna go ahead and add our overall world appearance. So what we're gonna do is we are going to add kind of an outer border uh, as well as kind of a, a menu bar at the top per se. So let's go ahead and add this outer border. To do that, uh, I'm just gonna say appearance of world. Uh, I'm gonna set the stroke to be green so that's gonna be 0, 255, 0, color code, RGB. And then I'm gonna put a little comment that says green. I'm gonna set no fill. I'm going to set the stroke weight to be three, so it's a little bit more bold. And then I'm gonna draw a rectangle that's centered on my screen. So the X, the centered X positions width divided by two comma height divided by two and I want it to be the same size as the screen so I'm going to type in width and then height. By typing in width divided by two height divided by two it automatically finds the width of the screen which is 600 and then divides it by two so it types in 300 for us. 500 for the height divided by two is 250 and then this would set it to be 600 by 500. Those are kind of internal variables that are formed after you create your canvas. Let's go ahead and press play. Interesting. Our, our border is not actually centered. In fact, it looks like the corner is centered, and that's because our rectangle mode needs to be set. So I like to do this in setup. Set modes. And let's go ahead and set a rect mode to center. Notice that the M is capitalized. Any two word command, so create canvas rect mode stroke with the second word will always have a capital letter and if it is a three word command which does exist the third word would also be capitalized that's instead of putting a space and then center because it's a de declaration there a parameter you have to put it in all caps let's try that again there we go we have a nice border here excellent let's go ahead and draw a rectangle at the top here and what the rectangle is going to do is it's going to give us uh, just a spot to put our score and everything down the road. So underneath where we just do this last rectangle, we're now going to say no stroke. We're going to set the fill to be green. And we're going to set a rectangle that's rect width divided by two. So that's centered 25 
pixels down width for the width of the rectangle and then 50 for the height we'll just call this oops banner let's give that a try perfect so this is where we'll put score lives etc so now we know how much space we have to work with because this black area down here that's where all of our characters will go all right now's a good time to press save now all we're going to do left in this uh, introduction first video is we're just going to set up the groundwork for our aliens and player one so the groundwork for that is we're gonna draw our player, which is just gonna be drawn as a rectangle for now. We'll substitute the rectangle with an image later, and he's gonna be drawn right down here dead center. And then we're gonna draw our first alien. We're gonna have rows of aliens, obviously. Uh, probably, I don't know, eight or nine or 10 aliens wide. So we're gonna draw our first alien right here, top left corner, and then once we draw one alien, it'll be very easy to copy and paste down the road. So we're going to have to set up some variables because our alien, our player is going to have to move and our alien is going to have to know when it was collided with a missile, rocket, etc. So to declare a variable, you can do that up here in the global section. And we're going to have lots of variables by the end of this. So I like to do subsections. So this is player variables. To declare a variable, you type in the word var space and then the variable name and you can do any name you want as long as it's not an existing variable so for example you can't make a variable called stroke because there's already something called stroke same thing for background draw etc so i'm going to call this p1x i don't necessarily plan on having another player but if you have p1 you could always turn into p2 down the road we're going to type in 350 because that's half the width and i'd just like to do a little p1 stands for player one var p1y let's go ahead and type in 475 so that's pretty far down let's do var p width let's make that 50 var p height let's make that 30 and var p speed let's make that 3 now, technically, you don't need to do variables for all these things, but if you want something to change, it needs to be a variable. So your player, maybe you want him to be able to grow during a bonus round. Maybe you want him to be able to move faster during uh, if, if he shoots, I don't know, some type of special thing or whatever it is, some type of multiplier. So by making variables for these, at any point in time, you could say, all right, you know, what, P, if he hits this, then P speed is not going to be three. P speed is going to be 30 or whatever it is. If you don't make it a variable, you really can't change it in your game. In our draw function, let's go ahead and actually draw our player here. So I'm just going to go underneath where we drew our banner. We're going to say comment draw player. Uh, let's go ahead and say no stroke, just in case we still have a stroke on. Let's set the fill. I'm going to make my fill blue. So 0, 0, 255 blue and let's just draw a rectangle using the variables that we created no more numbers here it's just p1 x p1 y p width p height and that's it now you have to draw these uh, variables exactly the same as you did up in global so i did a capital x capital y capital w capital h if you didn't do a capital then you don't do a capital down here if you did a capital then you have to do a capital down here one of the most common mistakes people make is they just don't stay consistent when they use their variables. Let's press play. All right, there we go. We have our rectangle. He doesn't quite look centered, honestly. Let's see why, why is that the case? P1X, is this not 350? Oh, you know what, that's supposed to be 300. That is why, sorry. Let's press play, there we go. Beautiful, nice, and centered. And last thing we're going to do is we're going to create our first alien. So I'm going to make a sub comment here up in global called aliens. And again, we're going to have many aliens down the road. Right now, I'm just going to put, uh, I'm even going to add another comment that says row one, because they'll be in multiple rows. Var a1x. Let's set that equal to 50. Var a1y. 
Let's set that equal to 150. We'll see what that looks like. And let's also create a width and a height for our aliens. So let's do like var a width. Let's make them 40 pixels in size. Var a height. Let's try 40 pixels again. We'll just see what this looks like. Obviously changing variables is very easy. And the beauty about doing A1X and A1Y, oops, once you set up all the code for your alien, you copy and paste it, and the only thing you need to change are the ones to twos, the twos to threes, the threes to four. It's very easy to add more aliens down the road. Let's go back to draw, sub comment, draw aliens. Let's do fill. Uh, I'm gonna set these guys to be white, so that's just 255 for now. And again, we're gonna draw a rectangle saying A1X, A1Y, A width, A height, like so. Press play, beautiful. So we have our player down here, we have our alien here, we have our window frame set, and we have all the variables set to start to talk about collisions, motion, everything that we'll get to in the later parts. Remember to press save, See you guys next time.